In the last episode, we talked about how to use the cards. But in this final episode, we're going to look at how to actually bring on your team by inviting members to view your board, and then once they're in, what you can do with them. And then finally, looking at the activity feed. So let's jump in. Now we'll pick up where we finished off, where we brought our card back to life from the archives. Now to add a member, simply head up to this icon up here, and then you'll be able to either type in the address or the name if they're already in your team. So fortunately, I've got a few people in mind. So I'm going to invite Jack to view my board and send him an invitation. It's as simple as that. So now Jack can see this board and he can now jump in and start editing it. Now, if I want Jack to do something specific, I can add him to a certain card and he should appear just like this. So he'll be notified now that I've added him to this card. It will now be assigned to him as a task to do. And if there's something specific I want him to do, I can tag him and say, um, arrange time and simply save. Now, if I was to leave a simple comment, he would get notified, but he wouldn't see the exact comment. By tagging him, he'll see just that. So that's a great feature when adding members to your board. Now we've talked about the members, but let's see what else we can do with the cards. So if we head over to the menu on the right hand side, you'll see there's power ups. Power ups are integrations such as Google Calendar, etc. And so we'll actually connect our Google Calendar to this because the great thing with the calendar is it will allow us to see what's going on throughout the day. So we'll just find it right now. There we go. Add the calendar. And then once you click it, you'll be able to see all the things on your to-do list that you've set due dates on. So of course, the walk the dog is to today, and you'll be able to see a nice organized structure of what's coming up. Now, besides power-ups, there's also stickers. Stickers add a little bit of humor and a little bit more visuals to your cards. So the stickers include thumbs up, smiley faces, and you can literally drag and drop them to indicate what's being done with that task. So this has been done, so we can move this over here, thanks to those stickers. Now, this menu isn't just about settings and customizable. What you'll be able to do with this activity feed is see what's been going on to the time. So, for example, if I was to leave this board and come back and Jack had done a few things, I could trace back his steps and at what time he did what. That way I'm never out of the loop what's going on with the board and potentially anything that I've missed. So there you have it. That is Trello for you. There's a few other features, but to get to grips fast in this three-part series, you'll find you'll be able to utilize it to practice that 80-20 principle, spending 20% of your efforts to get 80% on your results and also being able to collaborate with other creatives. Great thing about Trello is it's free to use. I personally haven't paid for the premium product, but with the premium one, you'll be able to have other plugins. So we use the calendar. Now we're only limited to one on the free product, but once you actually pay for it, you can then actually start adding other integrations along with other power-ups for your team. But to get started, the free version has been absolutely perfect for myself and my team. I think it will for you guys. So as always, keep thinking out of the box and we'll see you in the next tutorial. Take care.